Hey, what's going on guys? It's Limited here. And today I'm going to give you guys an unboxing and first impressions of the Magic Force Mechanical Keyboard, 40% 49 key keyboard. Uh, this struck a chord with me on their Kickstarter. I did find it on Amazon and I was very interested in trying it out because it's only 49 keys. It's very compact. It's very tiny. It's good enough for my Zim setup. So if you guys don't know about my channel, I use the Zim Apex almost all the time when I'm playing on my Xbox. I also use it for mouse and keyboard compatible games that also work for the console. And I'm gonna use it for my PC as well just to try it out. But um, let's give you guys a first impressions and unboxing of this really nice and simple keyboard. All right, and to get this started, you have a simple sleeve that represents the Magic Force logo along with the keyboard here. Um, it doesn't really show much other than the product features of how compact, steady, and handy and portable it is, the small space saving capabilities of it. Mostly it's in Chinese, so I'm not really surprised about that. Most Kickstarter things are basically Chinese items that are remarketed to become fuller fledged, more expensive items in the United States, but that's beyond the point. Other than that, it's basically just the sleeve that slips out and then you just have a plain cardboard box. So let's go right ahead and just lift that up and you are greeted with the pamphlets that is in Japanese. I'm assuming there will be an English version on the other side. This basically gives you the whole entire layout of the keyboard. There is no software that is for this, but they give you um, what the FN keys and other keys do. Uh, the legend obviously does say what each key can do, so you don't really get mixed up. You don't really need this. Um, unless you really want to know like what each light effect does because they also do have um, a lighting backlight as well and you could turn them on and off and uh, check change the effects and the brightness levels. Uh, other than that, you get a keycap puller, very basic plastic keycap puller. You get a USB A to mini USB. This is not a micro nor a USB type C. Kind of wish it was USB Type-C, kind of wish it was actually also a micro USB, but to be completely honest with you, um, I actually do prefer mini USB over micro. This is, in my opinion, just a more sturdier plug than the micro USBs. And then you have the keyboard itself in a packaging like this. And that's it. It's a nice plastic body. There is a metal plate on the top, what seems like that. It's a nice chamfered edge around that. And then of course you have your whole layout here. It omits the number row because they actually put it in the QWERTY section. And they also have the F keys along the ASD and the bottom row where the Z start. The main reason why um, I decided to pick this one up was mainly because I predominantly game on this keyboard here. This is a cooler Tron game pad with three different profiles. This is the non backlit version with gather on red switches. Um, as much as I do like this keyboard, um, I had issues where the software, which was super sketchy because it was from an Amazon site with a zip file. So I didn't really know where it was coming from. Um, they basically gave you software to change three different profiles, but it wasn't really working out. I do like how compact and small it is, and you could even see the red switches under here. Uh, and then the, the only thing I didn't like is that it also emitted the arrow functionality keys. So I actually added these myself and then in the software tuned them to have their own arrow keys. I also didn't like how the entry key was the space bar and that the M key was just randomly here. But this keyboard has served me really well. I actually really like this keyboard. I still recommend it. Um, the only thing I don't like about this software, let me just move that. The only thing I really don't like about this keyboard is A, the software, and B, sometimes that the profiles get messed up where um, it registers my profile one as something completely different and it always messes it up. So this is giving me some problems. I'm still going to use this keyboard because it's still very effective. And from the switches, they were actually really sturdy. I really like these switches. Um, what I actually wound up doing because I still wanted to explore my horizon with mechanical keyboards was change up the switch a little bit. 
these Magic Force one that I did buy, I actually wound up going for the Gateron Brown switches. If you went on their Kickstarter page, you could actually opt in to get Cherry MX switches, but there was an additional 15 extra dollars and in my opinion, just to get cherry switches, um, I don't really, I'm not that much of an enthusiast when it comes to actuation forces or feeling the tactility of differences between cherry and Gateron. So I was okay completely getting with the Gateron Browns over the cherry Browns. But like I said, it's completely up to you. Um, I did get this on Amazon and Amazon only has the Gaterons. But other than that, that's about it for the first impressions. I really like how minimal it is. It's you know, about the size of two of your hands when you place it down on your desk, you have perfect room to reach every key. That's the main reason why I liked this type of form factor. Um, this also has this also has different backlighting. Uh, you cannot use any software on this, so basically you're you're using this layout and that's it. Um, that's one downside uh, besides the micro USB port using a mini instead and there is no feet that can kick up. Another thing, let me just make sure, cause, okay. I just um, also read up on that some keyboards actually came out of the packaging a little warped, and I was trying to test if it was any um, difference in terms of like weight distribution, but in my opinion, it, it does feel very sturdy. So let's go ahead and actually plug this in. Um, I was going to plug this into a computer, but to make it simpler, I'm going to see if I could just plug it directly into my uh, iPad Pro. And that is going to have to use a dongle. So let's go ahead and clear this up. Move this out of the way. Okay, so that's a good sign. As soon as I basically plugged it in, it seemed to have... Un got rid of the keyboard here, so let's say hello. Okay, so it works pretty well. I am a weird typer. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> commented on the way I type things. I actually don't. Um, I don't type the way normal people do where they have like the extension. I actually use more of like my fingers and I hover around. So having a smaller keyboard for me would actually be a little bit better. Um, you actually, if you did notice that every time you press the key, they had a color profile on there. So let's see if we could change the color profile. If you hold down the FN key, you could actually change the effects and actually increase or decrease the brightness. Turn it off completely if you want to. You could cycle through an effect like this, an effect like that. Have all these other effects, like this one's like a star one. This one's pretty nice. And then you got your fully illuminated one. I'm gonna probably just keep it like this or um, probably have this a little lower. This is more of a white color. Uh, it does not change, it is not an RGB light. RGB would have been nice. I'm not the type of guy that likes RGB lighting. So even though you can sell by my setup, I do use RGB, but for my keyboards, I like to keep it plain Jane. Um, I actually use, for my regular computer, I use the, uh, the regular Magic keyboard from Apple. And funny enough, this is also called Magic Force, so it actually works just fine. And when it comes to a typing experience, the one thing you got to get used to, well, for me, um, the thumb, where your thumb rests naturally when you're gaming, it's perfect for the space bar. But because the space bar is not centered, I'm so used to probably just like putting my finger in this area where I got to make sure I'm not pressing the shift key. So let's go ahead and plug it into my system and see how it plays when it comes to gaming. Okay, so I just plugged this in directly into my Xbox and we're going to try it out when it comes to gaming on performance. So I am playing Modern Warfare with the mouse and the keyboard. They do have some key bindings that you could always play around with. Like for instance, when it comes to switching weapons, I don't like the fact that you could scroll up and down to switch weapons. I actually just default to scrolling down to switch weapons. But as a secondary key bind, I actually use the one key to switch weapons. So in my case, now that I have a the letter Q also as the number one, 
I have to basically hold down the FN key and the one key to switch weapons. So we're going to actually go into a game and try it out. A lot of the keys that I'd use are already on this keyboard, but other things like switching weapons, um, I might map it out to other things as well, but um, we're gonna try it out. So right now, I'm gonna load into Ground War. <clears throat> And I have the G key to navigate between tabs. I need to get headshots. That didn't count as a headshot. I'm also just bullshitting right now. Oh, do you see that? Okay. <laughs> so I went to hit the escape key, which I'm used to being like above here. I gotta get used to that. That's just user error because let me grab grab my old one. Where I normally have my QWERTY key row, I got my full row here and then my escape key. So I normally have to. I normally have to like go from here to here, but I just have to go next to it. So that's something I gotta, I have to work on when it comes to hitting escape. I gotta hit it over there. Okay. I don't know why they're spawning me over here. Try using that. See, that's that's one thing I gotta get used to. That's one thing I gotta get used to. The key row here, since it's missing, I'm used to hitting the escape key like all the way over here. All I have to do is just go like that. Um, but yeah, you know, there's some tuning I need to do to get adjusted. Uh, basically, more of a muscle memory that you gotta get used to, but. The, the way the reason why I do like this is that even for a keyboard like this they basically shifted everything put it over on the side this is actually a really small and simple setup and as opposing to using as opposing to using something like this you know it's a pretty big jump
All right guys, so that's just about it for the video. I did film an outro, but I accidentally uh, pressed the wrong button, so I wasn't recording the whole entire time. Um, I just made a audio sample test using the keyboard, and I'm also using a different camera lens because I wound up using a different camera lens for the camera sh shots that I were doing. So instead of swapping out the lens and going after that, I'm using a 30 millimeter instead of the 16 I was using before. But anyway, nobody's gonna really notice that because I just pointed it out, but now you guys can all notice it. So that's about it for this little keyboard right over here. Um, so far, I am loving it. Uh, I do, some people complained about the sturdiness of the build. I do like the way that it has a metal frame around it. Um, the plastic on the bottom, you know, I mean, it, what are you gonna do? It's plastic, but it's a cheaper keyboard. It's around around 50 bucks. Um, if you wanna get a nice, small, compact mechanical keyboard, uh, it doesn't give you any compromises in terms of functionality. It's just, you gotta relearn some muscle movements when it comes to accessing your secondary keys, like your numbers, your F keys. Um, some things are moved around, like your caps lock is now your tab key, which I personally like, because I don't like the caps lock being there anyway. Um, one thing I would change, or multiple things that I would change, is the, the secondary shift key. Um, I kind of wish that this was just one whole space bar. Um, I'm, I'm okay with not having a shift key on the right side. I actually never use the shift key on the right side of the keyboard but that's only because I don't type properly. I don't have proper uh, typing etiquette. Um, and then another thing I'd change is that I would make this uh, mini USB port a USB type C perhaps. Um, I actually would prefer the mini over the micro. So it's a good thing that they do have the mini, um, but you know, get with the times. This keyboard came out um, about a year or two ago. I'm sure because it's, like I said earlier, this was like a Chinese manufactured keyboard. I'm sure this was made years ago, so I can understand why it still has a mini USB. Other than that though, um, if they ever were to make a revision to this Magic Force keyboard, I would really like to have USB Type-C. Um, RGB, maybe, um, but I could see this budgeting at around like an $80 price point. Uh, keeping the Gateron switches, getting RGB, USB Type-C, and another small complaint, maybe getting a um, little rubber feet that you could uh, extend out to. Other than that, guys, pretty satisfied with this keyboard. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions on my previous video for the HyperX, uh, HyperX Alpha S. Um, and if I were to recommend them with other headphones and stuff, um, I like, like I do with most of my products I'm reviewing, actually all my products I review, except for uh, one microphone I got for free. Um, I buy this with my own money, so if you guys ask me questions on how one headset would compare to another headset, and if I haven't reviewed it, I can't really give you guys my opinion on what I think about the newer devices. Like someone, for instance, wanted to compare my HyperXs to the Delta Cores, which were an Asus headset that I was actually looking forward into maybe buying and reviewing, but then that one caught my eye and I wound up getting that instead. But like I'm saying, if you guys want to do some comparison videos on headphones that I probably don't own. I can only give you my subjective opinion. But um, like I said, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, uh, feel free to let me know. I'll see you guys in another video. Have a good one. Take it easy.